Got the close. Bye. Five now, I believe. I'm Cardi, once again your host, because I can't find anyone else. Uh, with me today is again Ice. Hello. Wigan. Hi. New guest, Pally. What's up, everybody? And Smuffles. Hey, girl, hey. I don't even know what that means, but I love it. <laughs> so, yeah, no, we have uh, two new guests with us today, and one probably more permanent than the other. So we'll see how that goes, assuming he doesn't screw it all up. Which so I have like, been known to do, but yeah, well, I'll try my best. <laughs> so, and I guess to slowly break the ice, Smuffles, I, I, I love the name. And I know we had to make you do an S for that, but it just made it all the better. And I hope you keep it on every game you play from now on. I'll keep it. It'll be Thank there. Thank you. Thank you. That is much appreciated. Actually, there's a Z there in my League of Legends name. So well, that works too. Already halfway there. Makes you pro. Everyone yeah. knows you had a Z to a name to make you pro. So, <laughs> um, I guess we'll just jump right into it with uh, the gaming releases of this week, which are as follows. From at least the more important ones that I can see, the more interesting of them being Legend of Korra. Uh, Fear Online, the Kingdom Come Alpha started, and uh, Sid Mirror Beyond Earth, which kind of escaped me. I don't know how. It's like the most AAA release of in a while. That just I completely lost that one. So, do you have any uh, thoughts on any of these ice? Any any of them pique your interest, as it were? Sid Meier's Beyond Earth does. Um... Only because the science victory in Civilization Five, I think it kind of plays on that. So I want to play that when it goes down in price. I saw Wigan playing Fear online, and I would never, ever touch that game after seeing him play it. It looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. So the other it... two, I'm not too excited about. Oh man, really? Yeah. I, I thought the uh... although Legend of Korra is a budget title, I mean I'm a obviously a fan of the the show, the series as a whole, but to see uh, Platinum do a, a budget title, I thought that was kind of interesting and worth a look, you know, even if it is only $15. But I, I have heard mixed views about that. But uh, what about you, Wigan? Any of those? I know you love Fear. Yeah, I played Fear Online. Uh, <laughs> How'd it go? <laughs> Sounds like it's. I don't really want to. I don't really want to talk about it because it's kind of disappointing. It's a lot disappointing, actually. <laughs> uh, it it definitely has a lot of uh, pay-to-win aspects in it, and essentially it's just a shooter with the fear license attached to it. So they're not doing any of the fun asymmetrical things we talked about before, where one oh, goes kind um, of thing. I do not believe so. I did not try the co-op because I didn't want to play with a bunch of random people. And, and there was a couple of instances where you'd like walk into a room and it was trying to be scary and I'm like you're just distracting from me trying to shoot people so I was <laughs> like what what are you trying to do so, I might play it some more but it's not going to be for long term so the scary elements within the multiplayer like they try yes. to do a jump scare while you're shooting at people yes there was one there was one instance where I walk was walking through a level and the uh, Alma, the girl from the iconic girl, like jumps up on the screen, like a gentle, essentially just like pro is projected on your screen. And yeah. I was like, w well, that that was scary, but I'm I'm trying to shoot people, guys. So, <laughs> and then there's a few rooms that have like, uh, like there's a level with a uh, a jail, I guess. And then uh, there's like AI inside the jail that are like crazy or whatever. They're like being obnoxious but i'm like what that doesn't add anything to the it adds some atmosphere but it also distracts from the fact that you're playing a multiplayer shooter that other people are shooting at you yes i mean i guess i would be okay with it if say i was in a firefight and it and she freaked both of us out but if if i was the only one to get distracted by that i think that would actually kind of piss me off and i would probably end up dying because no one else got to see the ghost, and I got screwed out of it because I was the lucky chosen one to attempt to get my pants peed in. So. Yes, and I don't know if uh, I only have that had that happen once, so I don't know what triggers it or if everyone sees it or if it's just if you walk in this particular room. 
So, but yeah, essentially that could happen, and that would be really frustrating. Yeah, that would that would outright piss me off, actually. <laughs> um, I know you're a great fan of Kickstarters and whatnot, so I actually picked this title particularly for you for the Kingdom Come. Uh, Deliverance Alpha has just started. You got any, uh, want to be a doomsayer or nothing like that? Um... No, don't. Hold on. You didn't provide a link, so I got... When... I'm, well, I mean, I... I, You know what? I do the best I can with the project I, I, I do got. appreciate. Alright, I think I found their website. It's an RPG game? Yes, it's... They basically tell it as being Skyrim without the magic and the dragons, which is why I was particularly interested in it. What engine is it in? I don't know if it's proprietary or CryEngine. I'm not sure. It looks rather like the CryEngine from the screenshot up at the top. Well, then my money's on CryEngine. They have... Where's the... <laughs> um, I, I don't like Kickstarter, so I'm going to be like, Kickstarter's crap. But I don't see enough information on the front page to make any... Well, I told I mean, you so comments. Honestly, uh, Come back to me in five minutes. Hold on. I, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you. Um... What uh, I guess what goes on to me is that I know I was particularly uh, sad to hear that the Legend of Korra isn't doing as well as I thought it would, given that it was made by a AAA publisher and has it's a great license, it's a great universe for you know, a game to be in, especially uh, an action brawler. So to see it do poorly is actually very disheartening, and considering this probably will only help. Nickelodeon cancel the show and I know Nickelodeon you know cartoons but this is actually a really damn good show and I recommend it for anyone Eight, um uh, why did they cancel always. the show they canceled the show because it wasn't as doing as good as Spongebob essentially they they pulled a firefly on the show right where they it sounds they like it the dates they they changed things around they didn't advertise it and they're like why isn't it doing good so this is the last season they're doing, and then it'll be shelved for a while. It may come back, I don't know, but it's a bummer to see it happen like that. To see uh, some original programming get shelved like that hurts. hurts how is heart. how is SpongeBob still on television? They haven't because, run out of ideas yet. Well, it doesn't matter because when you got a demographic, the greatest demographic of kids and stoners. You combine the two, and that's like half the population, right? That's what I was going to say, because when the, <laughs> the 10-year-olds that grew up watching it turn into 20-year-old potheads, they'll find a whole new appreciation for SpongeBob SquarePants. So, yeah, no, it's it's a shame to see that not do so good. Personally, from everything I've heard from, from everyone, including yourself, I am not even going to touch fear. I mean, I might try it for the co-op. Me and Pally might play through that. Um, but right, I can it, guarantee you I'll try. Yeah, so I'm All not right, sure. well, invite me then if you're doing the co op. I'd like to play with you. Wait, what? How big is the co op? Is it like four player? Two player? What? We'll, we'll work you know that what? out um, later. I want to say yeah, four, but that's just an assumption. It just says cooperative story mode, and from what I see, I see one first person view and two other players, so I'm guessing well, a go. minimum of three, possibly more. So, I mean, I guess we'll give that a shot then. Um, the. And I guess the Kingdom Come to me, I, I brought that up not just to piss you off, Wigan, but I actually looked forward to that game because it looked really good. And the combat they did show, and it, as well as the crafting system, it all seemed like a Skyrim plus mode. Like they, like, like they touted it, touted it, touted it as to be a, a high-end Skyrim without the, the magic and the dragons because that's fine because I hate mages anyway. So but that's interjecting right there really quick... How, then how would it be Skyrim without Magic well, Dragons? It, Isn't like, that essentially what makes yeah, Skyrim I, Skyrim? Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, they, they're trying to do like that in-depth, you know, Elder Scrolls. You know, you got all of these tomes and in, in crafting system and, you know, sword play and upgrading and all that. But just without the whole mystical arts behind it, essentially. You know, so it's like a medieval RPG. And it, well, that's it cool. Was... I, I suppose I, I could get behind something like that because I, I'm tired of farming great armor and awesome weapons only to get 
burned down in two shots by some caster with a fireball. So I don't even get me. St you know how I feel about mages. So before we get into that rant, um, and I and like I said, I I skipped right past Sid Mirror. I I didn't know that Beyond Earth was actually so close to release. That's how great of a gaming person that I am. And from what I hear, it's it's really good. It's it's all around pretty well rounded, but it, it's still missing some of the features that uh, the other games had. So I think I might wait for like a DLC pack to really, because that's when you you know they're really fleshing it out. Just once they have a two or, two or three DLCs with it, you get all the great features, which makes for a really great game. So I'll probably end up waiting for like a gold edition or what have you. But, I mean, I guess those are my thoughts on that. What about you, pal? You got any... I, I was just going to say that I was going to wait for a gold edition for that, too. Especially oh, yeah. with the uh, rather severe changes they brought with the Civ Five expansions. Yeah, they, they do change a lot with those. So I, I figured, why not wait? It's in the best interest. Patient gaming. It sucks, but... You know, and what can you do when you're poor? Did you Did you want me to tell you what I thought about the Kingdom... Oh, um, are you ready? You're ready? Uh, yes, it's on the CryEngine. Uh, there is some video of some environments that look interesting. Again, my whole thing about the Kickstarter is, do you actually have something to show for it? It looks like they have pieces of it, and it looks, and it does look pretty, but the CryEngine in general looks pretty. And I guess... Um, I guess I I get it's like wait and see like I can't there's nothing that for me to play with like I have okay yeah. that's nice they're making a game let come back and call me when you're done and you have something for me to actually like play yeah I there's mean I guess something in beta that you can actually uh, wrap your hands around you well, said it was in beta right it's in alpha right now alpha. oh alpha all right well then so, wait till I mean but. Even then, they've showed off a lot of their elements. Like I said, they've showed off their crafting. They showed off some of their storytelling. They've showed off the RPG elements of your armor and how much of it you can change around and whatnot. So, I mean, they actually do have a a lot there. And I, I will, you know, back you up on that. Where if you, you can't see anything in a in an alpha or in a in a Kickstarter, like all they have is I've seen so many of them. All they have is an idea. And they have like bare minimum. They have some concept art, and I was like, "How do you, how do you even get funding for this kind of thing? Like, if they don't even have like a playable tech demo of some kind, why are you even here?" But these guys seem to be putting the money where their mouth is for the most part, and I actually can't wait for it. So, but with that, hell yeah, I'm assuming no one has any thoughts on that. Any you got any uh, ideas on the releases of the league? I'm sorry, was that directed at me? Is no yeah, one else has any Cali. ideas there? Okay, I just wanted to be sure. Um, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm going to go just a little bit out of order here because I want to save fear for last because I probably have the most to say about that. Um, Legend of Korra, I have to admit, um, it's really not something that's on my radar. Um, Nickelodeon and Nicktoons, because I'm, I'm kind of the resident old man on the scene. Um, it's something that kind of came up after I, I would have had interest in it. Um, so I hadn't really heard much about it, although I, I have heard that the the anime itself is more oriented toward uh, more of an adult audience. So that may actually draw my attention to it because I still do find some interest in media like that. Uh, I did take a look at some of the videos for the game. Um, I was impressed with the uh, animation and artwork of the game because it seems to fall in line very, very much with... Uh, the television show itself, so uh, people who are fans of the television show, I'm sure, are going to feel right at home right there in the game. Uh, it does look like a very fast-paced, fun, perhaps, uh, beat-em-up in terms of, of the speed at which it's happening, but um, it is receiving some rather uh, crunch kind of reviews on it as far as, as its playability goes, and, and that can really affect the beat em up I mean, it can be as beautiful as it wants and super fast paced, but if it's got poor control mechanics, then that's always going to be a difficulty to work with. But I can't speak with that, you know, from personal experience. Uh, Kingdom Come hadn't even heard anything about, so I'm going to just go ahead and skip by that. Uh, probably <laughs> agree with Wigan on it in this regard that right now they really don't have anything for players to wrap their hands around, so it's probably just 
a media blitz to keep attention on it while they begin to push it through alpha and toward beta. As it approaches beta, I will probably take a greater interest in it. Um, Sid Meier Beyond Earth, um, I, I got to be probably the odd man out here. I've never really been a big fan of real-time strategy games. I find them to be incredibly time-consuming for an ultimate reward that generally I only myself see. And if I'm going to put that much time into a game, uh, I tend to prefer games like MMOs where all the time I've put into it, someone else stops and goes, wow, that's killer looking armor or a great looking sword. Um, I hate the feeling that I've put hundreds of hours into something and the only person that's going to walk away from that is is myself. Um, I, I did love real-time strategy games for a while. I, I played Populous, I played the Dune 2000 series, I played the early Civilizations, StarCraft 1, but after a while they all just sort of start feeling the same. So my apologies to any fans of Sid Meier games out there that would tell me, no, no, wait a minute, Pally, these games are completely different with all sorts of systems built into them to keep you interested. It's just that they came along after I had lost interest in the genre. Now, fear. Fears kind of got a near and dear place to my heart. I absolutely fell in love with the first fear. That game actually prompted me to kick my console out the window, go out, build my first custom gaming computer so I could run it when the first game came out, and it literally scared the hell out of me. It is the only game I have ever played where it made the hair on my on my arms and on the back of my neck stand up between its environments the musical score, um, the visceral feel of the game itself. Um, it, it was an unbelievable experience. And um, it's something that really I'm yet to see another game match in terms of that feeling. Um, it was not a, a monster in a box scare like the way Resident Evil games or the Doom series were. I mean, this game was the only game I ever played where I was scared to go into the next room, not because I was worried that I was going to get gunned down by a bunch of AI or a demon was going to pop out of a locker at me, but because I was literally terrified of a 16-year-old soaking wet all of the ring girl or her 8-year-old alter ego. I mean, it, it the game was frightening. And the second one did a great job on elaborating on the story of Alma um, Armacam, how they became, how she became what she is. Um, it, it, the ending of the first one had one of the greatest revelations in gaming I'd ever experienced, Sixth Sense kind of moments. And the second one took it to an adult level, the ending of it. I won't spoil it for people that haven't played it, but honestly was one of the most holy shit moments for me in gaming I've ever experienced. I can't believe the publisher actually had the balls to do it. Um, so if you have not played those games, um, they may look a little dated by today's standards. I would highly recommend them. Now, the online parts of those games, to me, felt like it was an afterthought. Something that they just tacked on at the end of it went, well, you know what, there's this whole first person multiplayer online community out there. Why don't we try to get a bite of that taco also? And instead, it just felt clunky. It felt like it had poor mechanics. It was um, a last minute thing that they just added into the game. And I don't think anybody ever went to the store with the intention of, wow, this has got online multiplayer. I'm going to grab this, not with other titles out there like Modern Warfare um, and ones that had really cornered the market on that particular aspect of first person shooting. So that to me is not what made fear fear it is it it is what it its name said it was a fearful experience and it was a very visceral experience and it got into your head psychologically um, and that's something that online run and gun noob tube multiplayer grenade chucking just cannot do so i'm sorry i mean i was excited to hear about this i can't believe i didn't even know it was on the radar um but i'm sorry to hear that essentially it's more or less the same thing that they're online that was attached to their previous titles already was with an occasional Alma monster in a box scare. That's not what it was, but, but that sounds like what it's become. Um, I'm very much interested in the multiplayer aspect of it, and I will get together with uh, Wigan and with you, Cardi, to check that out and see if it can deliver in a multiplayer sense on the original scare fest that was fear but i'll have to wait and see if that's you know if if they can actually deliver on that but i am 
interested. So I, uh, I definitely will check that out. Yeah, it's it's hard to be uh, you know scared when you got like twelve people in a room together, kind of kills the atmosphere at least. Well, for me. yeah, I mean, if if all it is 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 more or less watered down modern warfare in a strobe light, no thanks. I I'll pass on you know the epilepsy check. Um, I, I I am very much interested in the multiplayer aspect of it. And like I said, if it can deliver on the intent of what fear originally was. Um, the third one, uh, which was the final installment of the franchise, unfortunately moved it away from the fear that it was and really turned it more into simply an AI assault on you for 12 stages and really kind of skipped over once again what made it what it was. It's nice that they closed off the series because the original publishers went through some pretty serious financial and legal problems. The uh, original publisher went out of business. The IP was in limbo for a lot of years. So it was nice that it got closed up. Um, the final installment of the story was co-written by John Carpenter, an absolutely famous horror writer. And um, I think he did well with the material that he had it felt like they kind of shied away from the ballsy moves that they had made in the past with the story but at least they brought closure to it i was disappointed with the game because it just felt like it was a run and gun it was not the uh the creep uh suspense that kind of built up inside of you over the hours of playing but i, I was interested to see the story through to the end so um it's an IP that I've always really loved. It's near and dear to me, and I will invest the time to see if their online um, is, you know, is worth a heck. I'm going to go ahead and check it out. Um, I'm very, like I said, I'm, I'm more at this point interested in the uh, co-op story because I think if it has any potential at all, that's where it is. I don't anticipate if their online is what it has traditionally been in the past that it's going to hang around for very long. Well, yeah, I mean... I mean, you got free to play, you trying to give what you pay for, but I'm sure that's something will actually, it's not a bad idea, we can probably check that out tomorrow during the streaming session. Not a bad idea at all. So, um, Ruffles, my friend. Yeah. How you doing? Good. You got, uh, any, uh, any thoughts on any of the release of the week? Any of them tickle your pickle, as it were? <laughs> Yeah, so um, Legend of Korra, I haven't looked into much at all. Um, I pretty this much took only one that likes it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't know if I wouldn't like the gameplay. I just don't like the art style. So I took, you know, a look at it and was like, oh, it's kind of a brawler. It's got the more cartoony look. It's not really my thing. I'm much more of a, I'm much more of a sci-fi guy, which is why Sid, Sid Meier's Sid Beyond Earth, the new game, that that was like, oh. That looks hella cool because I played Civ Five and I and I liked it a lot, um, but I, I kind of got bored of it because you know I like the lasers and cool special effects and shit. So I think this one might be totally worth playing. But like you guys were saying, they do come out with DLC that changes the game a lot. So I'm probably gonna wait for a Game of the Year edition or a Steam sale to get Beyond Earth. Um, yeah. And then the other cool thing um about beyond earth is i i just updated my video drivers my amd ones and they enabled mantle support for it which means it should run a lot smoother on my 7970 which is cool because one of my main gripes about civ 5 is i couldn't play the biggest game and i couldn't play with like you know everything enabled um because it just it just tanked the graphics and i didn't really understand why because it's not it doesn't seem like a super graphics intensive game but when you get that much stuff on the screen at one time it really bogs it down so i'm hoping that mantle support will will help out there um as far as fear online goes um it looked when the stuff i looked at seemed really cool but i'm very hesitant to really get into MMO FPSs, especially free to play ones, because every time I've tried them, it's been either a, a pay to win or just not very well executed. And even the ones that that tend to get pretty good uh, reviews are my friends like like Planet Side 2. A bunch of my friends really liked that, um, but I just hated it. It just it just wasn't the quality I was expecting or, or wanted, really. Um, 
so I'm really hesitant to try out games like Fear Online because of that. Um, and from what Wigan was saying, yeah, it sounds like it's it's not the greatest game. It's got tons of horrible reviews on Steam. Might still be worth checking out, but I don't think it's a game I'm really gonna gonna play much of. Uh, yeah. So for for Kingdom Come, that game looks really good so far. The the stuff they have. I mean, it looks pretty so far. It looks good. So I don't know about the gameplay because they really don't show too much of that from what I could see. Um, but it looked very, very pretty. Like you guys were saying, the Cry Engine does that anyways, which is which is nice. And RPG should look good because you know you're pretending to be someone else essentially. Um, the whole no dragons, more medieval kind of thing is great. I think that's going to attract a lot of a lot of players i know a couple friends that are like totally totally in love with the whole medieval thing and they'll probably love it for me i have taken kind of a step back from rpgs which i really like but with a busy schedule with school and work i just haven't had time to put into them and so any game that says anything about crafting i pretty much instantly put on the shelf i just can't i'm not going to play it because if i have to craft in it if i have to craft in it then it's just too much time of not fast paced action. And that's kind of what I'm looking for, even in an RPG, which I know is asking for a lot. Um, shame on you. Yeah, shame on me. But I mean, like Skyrim, <laughs> I didn't I didn't have to craft in Skyrim. I could do anything else. And just like, I mean, they had crafting in it, but I never went to that fucking blacksmith thing. I, just went, <laughs> I went and killed stuff. I went and had fun. That's exactly what I did in Skyrim. They told me to go right, I turned left and went around the entire continent. That's that's how I play RPGs, and that's how it's been since uh, Morrowind, which is probably my first real RPG that I sunk billions of hours into, and still never crafted in that game. And that was outstanding game. Yeah, so good. <laughs> and that was uh, that was like way before I was even even had a job, so I even yeah. had more time. But the crafting just turns me off in any game, and I don't know if it. If Kingdom Come is going to have crafting that you're going to really have to do to be decent at the game, um, but I hope not because it looks really good and it's something I'd I'd probably be interested in if it uh, if it comes out with some with some good gameplay. Um, so yeah, like you guys are saying, I'm I'm waiting for the some more beta footage um, before I check it out. In the alpha stage, everything feels a little clunky. The the combat that they did show was kind of slow and not too uh not too smooth which i understand from an alpha um, i'm just hoping it doesn't stay that slow i understand they're trying to be historical and you know giant claymores aren't very easy to swing um but i'm hoping it gets just a little bit more action focused and, um and for the combat at least i'm sure um, there'll be mods for that oh yeah yeah for sure <laughs> uh oh. I don't like to I don't like to judge a game based upon the mods that are available for it though. Uh, any third party stuff is great, but I like to see how much the developer can really put into it and make it good before mods. Because if you have a really good game that doesn't even need mods, like Skyrim to me didn't didn't need any mods, and it then they came really out. There, but... <laughs> well, for me, I didn't think it needed any mods. Like yes, it could have been better with mods, and that's why a bunch of people made mods. But it didn't need them to sell the game, which is pretty important to me. Because I think if a developer is going to make a game, they should try and make the game good enough to where it can sell before mods. And then mods are going to be that kind of thing that third-party people make, and it's going to help sell the game even more after it's been out for a little while. But you really got to make the game good enough so that way when you release it, it sells. And for a while after you release it, it sells. And people will just buy it because it's a good game, not because these mods make it so fun to play. If it's a good game, and then there are mods that make it fun to play, it's just going to be a lot more successful. So, yeah, that's kind of my enough. two cents. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna agree with Smuffles on that one, that for me, I always kind of felt like mods highlighted what a developer could have and didn't do with the game themselves. Perhaps, you know, they have time constraints and cost constraints that they're working with, but it just it always felt to me like, wow, this is what it could have been. And this was done on the backbone of people that did it out of a labor of love in their own time. That's that's really impressive. But it, it to me, at the same time, it highlights what the game could have been. Yeah. Well, before we get into the 
you know, the, the pros and cons of modding, I think we should probably move on ahead to the more news-oriented. And uh, before we get into the big story, the more, I guess, that everyone seems to be talking about, I want to start with something light and mildly depressing of the leaked footage um, of Battlefront 3. I don't know if you guys saw it, but I was happy and very sad to see this almost thing be a thing. So, I mean, I don't, I, like, I, I chose this story because I didn't really have any you know, other thoughts other than to say, then, damn, this could have been Battlefront 3. Look at it. That's all it is now. It's just an alpha on YouTube. I mean, I don't know if you guys. I mean, I'm hoping some of you guys play Battlefront. I, I took too. a look at the video. I played the first Battlefront and absolutely loved it. The second one, um, I felt just kind of added to what they had already had. It took it to, uh, I guess, the next level with the technology they had available at the time when the the sequel was made. Um, but just kind of more or less felt like a rehash of the first. Um, but I absolutely loved Battlefront. I have been hoping for years for a quality um, next generation, if you will, reiteration of it. And I'm really, really sorry to see that this is now going to go into the realm of what could have been video game legend. Well, I mean, yes and no. I mean, DICE, is, they got their hands on the, the IP so they're actually working on something. I'm sure they'll release it or show something in the next E3 or what have you. But, I mean, this this could have already been a thing is the unfortunate part. And we could have already been on Battlefront 4 or, you know, what what have you. And it, that just it just breaks my heart. So, I mean, what about you guys? Icewig and you guys got any thoughts on the game that could have been? I have a question. Why did they cancel it? Uh, the studio went under. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm like, from 2008, this looks really good. Yeah. They, they've they spent a lot of time on the character models, it seems. I mean, obviously the backgrounds and what have you weren't much there, and I'm sure they already had a lot, you know, set in from the other two games to make an easy transition. But, oh man, was I looking forward to this game. Oh, I gotta see what EA is gonna do with it. Yeah, I, that's, I love. That's a scary thought. <laughs> yes, it is. I love Battlefront too. So I've been hoping for Battlefront three for a long time, and hearing it canceled is definitely a heartbreaker for sure. Um, yeah, it it could be a fantastic game. There aren't a lot of games that have really, you know, made that are really the same flavor as Battlefront. You know, I mean, you still have games that use a ticket system and stuff but none of them are just none of them feel the same as battlefront so i was hoping they could come out with three and make it really good but getting canceled sucks yeah well we'll just have to see what dice does with i mean I'm, i'd be interesting to see you know dice make a gritty you know star wars battlefront i could i could actually get behind that you know like a very m-rated in a way i don't think they're gonna go that far but it would be nice to see so, not the wait, unfortunately. But with that, I guess you know. I mean, that was just a small topic, but moving right along for Wigan. Wigan loves this kind of news. Uber Entertainment cancels their Human Resources Kickstarter because they were nowhere near their goal, only making three hundred eighty-four thousand, needing one point four million. So they they just straight up canceled that. And uh, they, they said that, um, I mean, it's not dead in a way, that they're going to find a way to make it work. I'm sure they're going to go through to, you know, traditional publishers, try and find a way. But as of right now, that has been shelved. So Wigan, be my guest and go, I told you so, I told you so. Uh, I told you so. Like, I get, like last week, we <laughs> talked about this, and there was no reason for them. They haven't finished their previous game. They didn't finish the game before that. Why are they asking for 1.4 for their new game? Yeah, I don't know why people even gave them that 300,000 in the first right? place. I read some comments on PC Gamer, and a lot of people were like, Oh, I really wish that game would have... And I'm like, do you guys live under a rock? Do you not realize the uh, their history of starting things and not finishing them? I mean, yeah, I don't know their, their cycle on... Uh... 
was it total annihilation is the other one planetary the annihilation planetary i mean I, I mean i i haven't heard much about it but again it doesn't seem like it's complete yet so i mean i don't understand yeah, like you said then they had to get i think two kickstarters for that one to get where it is yeah now. i there was some some money shenanigans where they didn't they ran out i guess and, the and then they needed battle. more and yeah. then they still didn't finish it. And then they started another one for a different game. And yeah. I'm like, so while they're working on their current game, do they have Joe Blow in the corner working on uh, ideas for their next game? Like, where, <laughs> where's the, like, let's finish the one we're on, guys? Yeah, I, I feel like it's not really their place, but I feel like Kickstarter, they should, in a way, overview a, you know, if a game is... You know, being worked on, and if it's complete, then they should be allowed to make another Kickstarter. But if a game isn't complete, or the project, or what have you, whatever it may be, if 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 the game, the, if it's not complete, then they should not allow you to to make another project. They should, you know, force you to finish what you have before you can move on to something else, at least for some sort of um, safety measure. You know. Yeah, it sounds kind of like a way to abuse the hopes, dreams, and pocketbooks of a lot of people out there that are waiting, you know, voraciously for whatever given title that may be. And $1.4 million, I mean, I've seen a few Kickstarters go through. 1.4 mil is an awful lot of money to ask for. And this is my question. What happens to the to the 384 they raised already if nothing comes from this? I mean, they do don't they get, get to it. keep that? Or, or no, what they happens don't pocket that? Does it goes, go back to the people who put yeah. the money up in the first place? Yeah, if it, does, if it doesn't reach the goal, then the money is never sent out. So but where they, does it go? It just it goes back. It, it, never, it returns back to your wallet. Returns or to the, the person you, who who donated yeah. it in the first place. Right, Pretty well, much. That's reassuring, at least. But so they can't still, pocket like one three hundred thousand. One point four million. I mean, that's that's a lot of money. So well, you would think, especially if if they have a track record of not, you know, being able to show for it, that uh, that there would be some sort of repercussion for that. Yeah, well, I mean, again, it's not Kickstarter's place. It's pretty, it's pretty much, you know, they have to, you know, the the people have to vote with their wallet. They should have never, I mean, they kind of did in this aspect, and they were never going to get funding for this. But I mean, I I guess in their weird twisted logic, in a way, you can kind of spin it into like, well, we made two million for this other game. I don't see why we, you know, I mean, one point four. I don't see why that, you know, is such a hard number to figure out because they did get a huge amount for their first game which is still pretty much not complete well that's what so. i was just going to say though but but for a game that they never actually successfully brought to the market so it, it sounds to me like once again they've they've overreached and not been able to deliver yeah so i know i know wigan really enjoys that kind of news i just that. i just think they desert like they're they were in the wrong in trying to ask for more money when they haven't finished their previous game. And luckily, this time, the consumers were like, no, we're not supporting this type of shenanigans. That's what I was yeah. just going to say, is that perhaps that's that's reflective in the fact that they were able to raise, you know, two million before, and this time they were only able to approach one-eighth of that number. This is true. This is true. Um, Spuffles or Ice, you guys got thoughts on that? I do not. <laughs> I, I pass. That's fair enough. You are allowed to pass. Not Wigan, though. Or Ice. It just cracks me up. I'm like, huh, you overextended yourselves. There you go. Got themselves <laughs> in the foot, pretty much, yeah. Yeah. We can only uh, cross our fingers and hope they go back and actually finish up Planetary Annihilation. And then I'll make a wish on a star that they finish uh, Super Monday Night Combat, but that won't happen. Oh, that community's terrible anyways. There's like yeah. people playing. Well, that's because they never finished. They abandoned it to go make their Planetary Annihilation game. Exactly. There seems to be a lot of that going on. Irez <laughs> comes to mind as well. But I moving rise, right yeah. along. And the one thing I wanted to add to that, though, uh, if you don't mind, Kyle before Cardi, before we, guess. we skip on. Um, I myself actually am a fan of Kickstarter because I, I think it enables 
um, developers out there to bring something to the masses that they themselves financially without a forum in order to do so wouldn't be able to do it. Um, particularly a lot of indie titles and a lot of remakes for older retro titles. Um, which I myself am a big fan of. Um, I've seen a, a handful of games now that were just near and dear to my heart as a kid and a teenager that have made it through Kickstarter and have now had a, a, a full faithful reboot done, if you will, for uh, a modern audience. Granted, it's a narrow audience because um, some people may never have heard it, had any love for it in the first place, and therefore it may kind of fall by the wayside for them in, in the modern market. Um, but some games, uh, one that comes immediately to mind, one that I've been playing recently, uh, Shadowgate 2014, um, was a Kickstarter that made it successfully, and I will be writing a review for the Curious Gamers um, regarding that um, to really see if it delivers on what the original experience of it was. But I am a, a big fan of what Kickstarter can and has done for uh, some creative people in the past. Yeah, I mean, it, it does a lot of good, but it, it, we've also seen a lot of bad come from it, a lot of a lot of lack of accountability where people could just pick up and, you know, shove this non-working product in front of everyone, charge them, take the money, and just book it. Like, with no responsibility and very I little that can be done that it about has it. the potential for abuse and that it is a, a double-edged sword. Definitely. Also, also I want to uh, mention that... Uh, Human Resources, the game that Uber was working on, uh, was another one of those that had no actual gameplay. Oh, it was all concept art, and there right. was nothing to show for it. And but they were just... Pretty much say, fuck those guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Almost 400 grand to draw some sketches, guys. Not bad. Right? I, maybe we should start <laughs> <Not> drawing <bad. laughs> sketches. I got some stick figures I can kind of pin up and see how much I can get for those. Like, 30 grand a piece. So... But, with that all being said, move on to the next topic of Five Nights at Freddy's has been greenlit for Part 2. Now, while, again, like, like it says, I didn't find this news very interesting at first, right? But you know, Wigan brought up that I didn't realize Greenlight was still a thing, for one. I thought they closed that after the first few batches, first hundred batches of games, and a lot of kind of controversy of it just being nothing more than a popularity contest. And uh, why is it going through Greenlight if it already had a successful, you know, first game? You now, why is why does it have to go through the process if they've proven themselves to be decent developers and have a good product, right? And to top that off, uh, the game was released in August of this year. You know, it 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 didn't have. That long out here. Why are they working on a part two instead of DLC or, you know, I, I maybe the game is fully complete, but I don't think this warrants a part two. So I mean, I don't know if any of you guys have played it, but it, I just, I'm just weird that it has to go through all this and why it's going through all this when it should be focusing on DLC or something along those lines. Um, start with you, Ice. I know you love going first. Well, I know it. <laughs> I guess it depends on how in-depth they're doing the second game. I looked at the game. It does not look interesting to me at all. But it's kind of cool to see somebody make another game than throw DLC. Like, we're just going to keep charging people for DLC. So it's kind of cool to see an other end of it. But this just looks like crap to me. <laughs> well... I mean, I can get behind you on saying, like, there was a time when DLC was kind of, you know, bad to see horse armor for Oblivion. But, I mean, assuming DLC's done right, you know, especially with this kind of genre, you can add new enemies, new maps, new, you know, features that I think would probably go very well for this type of game, would, would complement very well if it done it right. I mean, obviously there can always be bad DLC, but with the game's small shelf life as it is right now it's a few months i don't i personally i mean i'm glad he's making a part two i suppose but i don't know why at when this are point they anticipating it to come out you know i did not see i can't find that information because maybe they're just trying to get a head sub head start on it but without that information i feel like i'm not informed enough to give 
a solid answer. Yeah, I mean, if it has, like, you know, next year coming out next year, I guess I'll be a little less butthurt about it, but I don't know. It's, it's, uh, kind of grinds me a little the wrong way. A little money grabby. <laughs> but, I mean, from what I can see, there there's only, like, one new feature into this game. Um... And that does, for me, that does not warrant, I mean, I'm sure there's more, but that does not warrant a whole new game, a part two, uh, to the title, you know? So, I don't know, um, Wigan, you got any thoughts on that? Um, I'm gonna first say DLC is terrible at, uh, yeah, terrible and it should go away, and there's no good DLC. Wow. Yeah, I don't believe in DLC. It's it's essentially, um, I think of that as money grabbing, over yeah. making a sequel. Especially since I don't. Know. I since, game, I don't well, okay, back in whenever Call of Duty before they released fifteen dollar map packs, there's these <laughs> things called modders, and they would make maps for free, and then everyone could have them, and it didn't cost fifteen dollars. <laughs> so that's a thing that no longer happens now. Because companies want more money. There's a lot of instances where modders would have taken the world of quote-unquote DLC, but now that um, uh, developers and publishers have found out they can charge for it, they are like blocking up their game so you can't mod it, and then but so that they can charge you fifteen dollars for that hat next month. So right. I don't ever think DLC is okay. That, that to me qualifies under bad DLC, like. I don't then release a an expansion like you used to do. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I won't argue that fact. I mean, a lot of DLC is very light, and very cosmetic, and I don't believe has a place personally unless it's packaged with a hell of a lot more content. But I mean, I'm gonna have to go ahead and disagree that a lot of DLC can be very. I mean, yeah, it sucks that they they really did stifle the the modding community but i mean i don't know it's it's agree to disagree all right we can disagree to dis- agree to disagree um no, disagree. as far as the second game with this particular title i don't really have a whole lot of a- opinion about it i mean yes the last game came out in august you said yes and so like I said, maybe they're just like getting a head start on it. But yeah. from the comments, everyone's like super excited about the second one. So I don't know if it has some like cult following that I just missed out on, and it's super it, awesome, and everyone wants a second one. Everyone loves a scare game. Everyone wa- loves watching the people playing scare games. So obviously they're going to be more excited. But but yeah, like you <laughs> did for this particular instance, could this have been like an expansion or? A DLC like extended story piece. I I can't tell you at this point. Well, I mean, from what I have read, is there's from their description, I can only see one new feature being added. It, it, it was just basically a mask to fool the the puppets and what have you to not scare you. This is the only new feature that they're they're touting right now. The only one that I can see. So that that kind of even makes me more changry. So, but. What about what about you, Smuffles? Uh, I'm kind of on the edge of about DLC expansions and release times on sequels. And I think personally, what I would like best um, are I think expansions are the best way to go because you can you can release a lot of content, you know, that's worth actually buying. And you can keep playing your game, and the and the content's not going to be as expensive as a, as a new game. For a smaller title like um, Five Nights at Freddy's, I think coming out with a second game quickly is great because um, you know it's you can play through the entire game and you know whatever a weekend or something like that. And then if the second game or if the second you know game sequel of it or whatever is out in you know, a couple months or something like that. That's awesome. You don't have to wait a whole year for for a new game like you do with, you know, games like Borderlands or, you know, it's a year to come out with the next game. But then they release all this DLC in the middle, which sucks because I didn't buy 
any of the Borderlands 2 DLC because I was like, I'm not going to spend, you know, I don't know, whatever it was, like $60 on all this DLC when the next game's going to be out in six months. You know, I was like, screw that. Um, so I don't think, D I'm kind of with Wigan. I don't really like DLC much unless it is a big package and it's not that expensive, um, which I understand is kind of too much to ask for because companies need to pay people to make the stuff and then they want to make money off of it too. Um, but just going back to expansions like they used to do, I think is, is the best route to go, best compromise between developers and players. Yeah. The uh, well, from what I can see, uh, the the original Five Nights at Freddy's is actually a five dollar game, so that might explain the uh, rapid succession of Part Two and very little features. That might be their way of making a a DLC in a way. I mean, I'm still not happy with it. I think this could have been a, an an add on to the game, you know. Five Nights at Freddy's Reloaded, the Exhibitionists. I don't know. Fuck, I don't. I can't do titles. Don't. I'm not a title guy. But still, yeah, it's. It seems very, very in poor taste given the timing. But uh, what about what about you, Pally? Um. Well, Five Nights at Freddy's. It's it's a point and click survival horror, and, and I'm I'm actually happy to see games of that genre making a return to the market. Um, I'm a big believer that there are other forms of media out there that can be entertaining other than a high polygon count, a high resolution, and tons of frames per second. Um, so something that can get a fright out of you, make you think at the same time, and do it on a budget, that's a cool thing. Um, I don't think that the second one should have needed to be greenlit given the success of the first one, at least the niche that it found itself in. So I, I do think it probably should have bypassed that process. Now, as far as the pace at which they're doing it, I'm going to completely agree with Wigan here. I absolutely abhor DLC. I think DLC does absolutely nothing but incentivize or, or incentivize a developer to rush a title out prematurely, give us a half-ass game, and then charge us for what we should have got for our money the first time. Um, it wrecks the process of creative modding, um, and I think it just really is nothing more than has already been said, is an outright cash grab. Um, I'm going to pull an old man thing here on you guys. When I was a kid, we didn't get DLC. <laughs> yeah. We didn't get DLC. We didn't get expansions. We got a new game. And it may well have been nothing more than a rehash of the previous game with more polished graphics because it's two years newer, but we got a whole new game. Um, DLC to me is utter crap and is, is just really nothing more than sticking it to the consumer. Expansion, that to me is a word that should be reserved for a particular game or title that cannot be sequeled without completely scrapping the world, the characters, and the investment of time that the players have put into the game in first place, i.e. a big MMO where they can't just push out a new sequel to it without basically wiping everything that existed before it. So therefore, they push out a big expansion. Um, and that's all right, because you're getting your money's worth. With a big expansion, they generally cost near to or rival what a new game does anyway, but you're practically getting a whole new game's worth of material. So that keeps you interested, that keeps you going. But when all it is is $15 for a sword skin, or like Wigan said, you know, $10 for a stupid beanie hat, give me a break, or I gotta pay $15 for one extra map because you guys pumped this thing out with seven maps instead of the 10 it should have launched with, that's just a joke to me. So I, I really, really do not like, and for the most part, unless I absolutely love the game, I, I've almost made a concerted effort to not support DLC when and where I see it. Um, for the price that I pay for a new game, $50, $60, $70, I expect to get my money's worth, and I'm not going to hand them another $10, $15 in increments until I'm $200 in on a game that I should have got complete in the first place. And I'm not going to name any developers here, <laughs> EA, <laughs> uh, Ubisoft, but Gearbox. there are, are 
There are developers that are just <laughs> notorious everyone. for their DLC. You pretty much know when you go out and buy this title, I'm getting 70% of the game that they're promising me, and I'm going to pay for the rest of it down the road. And the market keeps eating that shit up, and it basically just keeps telling these developers and publishers that we can get away with it. And, and that it, 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 to me, it harkens back when they first started putting games in collector tins with some sort of gimmicky little character or a flip book in there. They didn't do that because they wanted to give us something extra with our game for an extra $40 or an extra $20. They did it to see if they could get away with charging $69, $79 for a game. Would people pay for it? And the answer was a resounding yes, we will. And now that's what we're paying for these games. So DLC was an effort in seeing, can we push a half-ass game out? People will buy it anyway. They'll rage on the forums. They'll rage on the internet. And yet they'll still buy our DLC for it. And the answer was yet again a resounding yes. And now that has become an industry standard. And I think in the end, it is lining the pockets of big developers. And it is sucking money like a vacuum out of the player's pocket. So it's just something I've pretty much over the years have refused to support. Well, I feel like I'm alone in this boat. It's weird. This is the first time for me. Odd man out. To... I know. It's I don't like it. Aw. I do want to <laughs> take back the Five Nights at Freddy's. It actually doesn't look like crap. <laughs> now I'm looking into it more and I'm like, I, I want to try this game now. Well, yeah, I, mean, I haven't it, I haven't played it, but it, it looks like it might be rather fun. It has an interesting concept, and from what everyone's told me, it's like, it, yeah, it's 100% jump scares, but the object is to avoid the jump scares, and if you end up getting one, it's kind of your own fault. You're not avoiding it properly, you're not, you know, paying attention in a way that you deserved it, essentially. So it's kind of an interesting, I guess, take on it, where it's not forcing you to get jump scared, it's just that if you mess up, then you get jump scared. So I'm not saying the concept's wrong. I'm just saying it's so early for something like this. But now, now seeing the price, I guess it can be kind of made into a, a DLC esque expansion esque thing. That's my that after seeing the price, like what are you gonna charge for DLC for this? Ninety nine cents? That's not gonna yeah, do anybody. I mean, you might as well go through and make it another game and say. Uh, I and and really if they good. release it for five dollars, and I'm not really gonna be mad at them about that. Yeah, it just it it seemed uh, very out of place, to me personally. But with all that being done and said, I think we'll probably end up moving on to the the most, uh, I guess, talked about topic this past week, being our Lord and Savior Gay Ben being threatened by a developer that uh, made Paranautical. Uh, he, he said some not very nice things, threatening to, um, I'm pretty sure, kill him was one of them. This is, yeah, this is a funny story. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, he he pretty much nerd raged because of the treatment he was getting and the the way that his game was being handled. I guess fair enough on his end like, to be a little mad. This is his livelihood. I can understand that. But then he just straight up just went, I'm going to kill Gabe, Gabe N., and they uh, retaliated with taking the game straight off of Steam. You know, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They just took it off. They said, if you need patches, uh, you know, talk to us. We'll work on a patch for you guys for the community's sake, not your own. You know, we'll work with you, but you're not selling anything with us anymore. The game's gone, essentially. So, and while it, it is... Um, a mildly interesting story. I, I thought, I mean, I may be alone on this, but I, I kind of thought they went a little overboard given just that it was a, a verbal abuse situation. I mean, he he pretty much nerd raged, and he, everyone knows to, to calm your temper, but I mean, I guess basically because I'm stroking, hold on one second. Cinnamon. 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 Um, do you, do you smell yellow, bro? I do. I taste purple, too. <laughs> the, uh, basically, what I was getting with is, should Steam have this kind of power to remove a game for such kind of, like, in a way... I mean, I guess it depends on your view. Um, should they have the power to remove this kind of stuff for something so small 
and and should they uh, should a whole you know company a team suffer because of one person's nerd rage breakdown? You know, so those are the questions. I mean, I kind of put them in a mildly bite. I couldn't think of any other way to word these questions without seeming you know in a non biased light. So next time I'll try a little harder. But I mean, uh, let's start with Smuffles. You got any uh, thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I think actually Steam did the right thing on this one. I think that if if people are going to make threats like this, we've, we've kind of learned through the last few years with all these sort of uh, death threats and then school shootings and stuff like that, that it's it's just something the the world should not take lightly, especially in America. So if if someone's going to threaten Gabe N to, to kill him or whatever, then yes remove their game i think now that he left code that mike left code avarice i think they should put the game back on steam because it i don't think it's fair to to hurt the whole team um but i also don't think it's fair to let anyone get away with with threatening at yeah. all and this has been really big in the media right now with uh like anna sarkeesian getting death threats and leaving her home uh felicia day you know, finally spoke out about the Gamergate thing, and then she got doxxed like an hour or two afterwards. It's it's pretty big right now, and I think that the the developers, the people with money that can make a difference, like more so than just us complaining about it, um, should not take this kind of shit from people. They should they should step on their faces and say, no, you cannot threaten to kill people. That's not okay. And right, we, it. Yeah, and we are not gonna <laughs> we are not gonna support you if you do that at all. So you know, do yes. not put up people's games if they're gonna make death threats. It's just I think absolutely. I think the, they need um... to. I think dropping the hammer is something that needs to happen because, um, kind of in this day and age, people are a little bit too lenient on that kind of thing. And you know, I understand the whole like joking on the internet. Oh man, I'm gonna fucking kill you. It fucking sucks, but. There's a there's a point where um, there be, becomes a little bit too much at stake that it could you know it could actually be real like you know if it's something sensitive like women in gaming or you know I don't I'm a game developer and I don't like what Steam's doing that's like saying my whole my whole company's on the line so when you say I'm gonna kill someone well that actually looks like motive so <laughs> that's a yeah. little that's a little too far to me. It's I not should. Like, uh, sorry, yeah. I mean, I just wanted to point. Out, I forgot one piece of it is that after all this went down, uh, the the guy who did the the, the tweets, Mike Molbeck, I believe, Molbeck, he ended up he ended up leaving the development team. He's he's no longer part of them either. So I just wanted to throw that out there as well. I'm pretty sure they gave him the boot. Um. So I'm I'm sorry, but if, if is that did you have anything else to say? Levels. Um, no, not really. Just right. that, yeah, basically, yeah. The, long story short, it's good that Steam is dropping the hammer and not letting people get away with bullshit. Well, funnily enough, I finally had something to say, and they went right past her, which is hilarious to me. So Ice. It is pretty hilarious. I actually don't have much to say anymore about it. It's already been said. <laughs> um, <laughs> I agree with steam they i'm surprised that they're still willing to help out with patches or not because i think if i were to walk into my boss's office and was like you're the most incompetent piece of fucking shit and i want to kill you i'd <laughs> my probably get exactly. fired and that's exactly what steam did and they're still nice enough to be like you know what what will we'll still help with patches for the consumers end, but not you go f yourself understandable that's completely unacceptable behavior from somebody who's in a position as a team leader that's putting your whole team members at stake they'll have to like change the name of the company to escape this kind of publicity nice yeah that i don't know um, i guess before i get to my thoughts i feel like i'm gonna be uh the odd man out once again wigan what are your thoughts um nothing that hasn't already been said there it is. uh the what's his name mike he uh ran his mouth on the internet and something bad finally happened i think it should probably happen more often people are <laughs> definitely not accountable for what they say on the internet and there should be some a, a bit more accountability 
Now, on the piece about his team essentially losing any money for uh, all the work they did because they decided to put an idiot in charge, part of me is like, well, you put an idiot in charge of your company, and the other part of me is like, well, maybe they didn't have a choice. So, I guess my third point is if the team that's left decided to say, okay, we're changing our name, we're, like, changing the game a bit, would would Steam let them resubmit their work? Because they, they did work on it. They did spend, you know, whatever, years, you know, making a video game. Would Steam then be like, okay, we can put your game on here under a different name because you did work on it? Yeah. I mean, I just... All right, you know what? I'm going to let Pally go first. Pally? I was going to say, am I going to get to go last again? I'm, I'm noticing a pattern. Uh, <laughs> um, look, I, I, you know, first thing I'm going to say is, is uh, you know, God forbid, right, that uh, Gabe Newell, right? I don't know what the Mike Mulbeck thinks, right, that Gabe Newell's got nothing better to do with his time than devote his, his undivided attention to him, his development company, and his game. He must think that Gabe sits up in his ivory tower all day doing nothing but counting his money. Um, I he doesn't. I am <laughs> completely in agreement with Ice here. If I sent out a tweet or made some sort of forum post that my boss had pissed me off and I'm going to kill him, even if it was in jest, I'm 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 a dead duck. I'm going to be lucky if I'm not getting escorted out of the building by security or police. So he he's damn lucky here that all that came of it was what Steam did and what they rightfully should have done, which was bring the hammer down on top of him. Um, I don't think that he really meant he was going to kill Gabe, but it just kind of illustrates the immaturity level of this guy that was in charge of this company. I would think that someone that is an adult who's running a business would find a more constructive way to vent his dissatisfaction um, with the people that are literally his bread and butter and his source of, of revenue for, for putting this game out there to the masses. I mean, talk about biting the hand that feeds you. What did he expect? Did he, did he expect that, that Gabe was going to just engage him in a war of words on the internet? Um, I don't think he's sorry at all for what he said. I think he's sorry that he got his dick slammed in the drawer for doing it. Um, he's fallen on his sacrificial sword. He's stepped down from the company. Um, he has done the politically correct act of contrition to try to save the development team. Um, so, you know, that's all, you know, hats off to him, I guess, but I don't believe that he's really sorry. I don't think he's any more sorry than someone who speeds and gets caught. They're not sorry that they sped. They're sorry that they got rolled. So that, that's what happened here with this guy. And it sends a message by and large, as, as, uh, Smuffles pointed out earlier, joking or not they're just some jokes that you should not make and i know i'm i'm kind of ironic for saying that because pretty much when it comes to joking with me anything's fair game but i know my place you know i joke with my friends anything's fair game if i'm in my workplace i'm not going to make jokes about bringing in a rifle and going postal on somebody that's just that is an ass nine thing to do i can't believe that someone did it but you know a lot of these these computer programmers slash uh, developer guys, you know, they, they can get kind of hot-headed and passionate about their work. So I don't think he meant it, but um, regardless, you need to own up to uh, to what you've done and, and pay the consequences for it. And, and he's definitely paying them in spades. So um, I think that Steam did the right thing here. Uh, I do think that they should continue to offer patch support because, you know, it's in their vested interest to... Uh, take care of their customers they shouldn't punish their customers over over and their subscribers over the mistake that the the developer of the game um has made so i, I think they're making a good call there um if there was really some true interest behind the game and they had a potential good game there then obviously the development team probably had some talent and maybe there is some avenue to uh help them continue to put something out there but obviously this this mike mulbeck guy he has no business being the front man for a company and has has done the right thing and and well out. i think i think there might be i mean i'm not sure if he's really the front man i mean it's just basically a guy with a, a, a twitter feed 
Well, which, like it or not, he became the face yeah, well, of of paranautical. Which which is I guess why I, I'm a little more weary about this is that I mean one yeah one guy lips off. He's not the PR, you know. He's not. He's he's just a developer. He's just a a, a keyboard jockey essentially, right? So I mean. He, it, it sucks that he decided to nerd rage aloud, which is very popular Car this day and age. Cardi, he owned half the company. Did he? Um, okay. My yeah, I, I, I thought he was a little <laughs> bit more than just your, uh, a grunt man there. I All right, well, then that, that then he fucked up. He is fucked up now. So, But even with that, I, I still stand by I, I don't think they should have went straight to booting the game. I, I mean, I would have probably went to some more, like, you know, email talks or something like that before I went straight into... I mean, because he's not the only one, right? Like, other people, they, this is their livelihood. See, that gets shut down because of one guy. Yeah, it sucks. But, I mean, you don't really... But I that's guess, his fault. Yeah. That's not Steam's fault. That's not Gabe's fault. If they want to point the finger and be angry at someone, they need to be angry at him. Then that's probably why he was let go. Well, he, so left. according to the press release, he he well, stepped down. It may be that he he may have had his hand forced on that behind the scenes, but as far as is being publicly related, he yeah. chose voluntarily to fall on the sword to try to take the heat solely for to to save the development team that had poured their heart, souls, and last couple of years of their lives into this. I'm hoping, at the very least, that with with this act done, that you know the game will be back on with. The, the development team because I, I think uh, the it, the whole thing was kind of in a way like a publicity stunt that you know like like you said in a way that you know Valve won't be putting up with this shit don't fuck with us and I, I think the point was kind of it, it came across but it, it sucks that other people have to, to to hurt for this essentially well, there's an old saying that no publicity is bad publicity, but in this case, it, it looks like this this may prove that that saying wrong. Um, but regardless, I mean, a lot more people are talking about Paranautical now this week than were a week ago. So um, there there may still be something that comes out of it for the dev team. Um, but like Smuffles said, you know, I mean, in this day and age of nut jobs walking into movie theaters and capping people, kids walking into schools, I mean, we just had one. A day ago um, you can't screw around with it anymore I mean it used to be where people would make these threats on the internet on Facebook and they'd get laughed at until somebody walks into a kindergarten room and now is is making headlines that none of us want to read so I, I, I absolutely think that steam did the right thing here flat out they, they needed to take a zero tolerance stance and that's exactly what they did yeah I suppose I don't like it so, I mean, or do you uh, not like it because you feel the rest of the development team are getting punished, but because of some idiot's big pretty mouth? Much, pretty much unjust. On you know, I mean, it's just it it doesn't feel right that it had to go to this extreme. They picked the wrong person to work for. I mean, they may not have had a choice, and you know, they're happy to get a job in the industry, but unfortunately, they were working for the wrong jerk. If they're as talented as they seem, I'm sure they will land on their feet elsewhere. Yeah. They they may have already also been paid. They might have been on salary, and then now that the game is done, they they just collect royalties or whatever until they work on something else. So it might not be you know end of the world for them, especially if Steam. I don't know. Back. One of them was he had no idea what he was going to do. At least yeah, I know. Twitter just feed some, said, so <laughs> somebody needed to make these crybaby princesses realize that they can't just spout off their mouths, say whatever they want without consequence. So I'm glad. I, I You know what? Cheers to Gaben. Cheers to Valve. Cheers to Steam. I'm glad you guys did what you did and you guys have done the right thing by your, your customers and you've sent a message. I don't think anybody in the near future is going to be sending death threats to Gabe Newell. <laughs> or call him an incompetent Unless you you're know <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, um, so I, I'm assuming we got all our thoughts out of the way. Everything one got their set their piece on this topic. Yeah. Yes. I'm not hearing a no, but yeah, uh, so we're gonna move on to something less pressing, and we're gonna do some basic questions. And I have uh, streamlined them. I even said I streamlined them. Stream, 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 broke. Um, so. 
I put them together, is what I'm getting at. Um, what games have you guys been playing this week? And at that same time, if you wanted, you know, anything funny or interesting happen, would be, you know, be all and just do it all in one roll, starting with ice. I had the <laughs> displeasure of playing Counter Strike Next on Zombies because I was like, uh... "Ooh, zombies! I love zombies. I don't love this game." This game was horrible. It actually made me want to cry. I uninstalled in the first five minutes because it, it, did, it was... Uh, the did you mixture, play around? Or? I attempted to, and it was just so bad. It's Counter-Strike, trying to be free to play, player versus player. I Zombies, no. Just, no, it's bad. Well, I know what not to get, I suppose. I can't even constructively say it's bad. It's that bad. Well, I mean, fuck, five minutes and you're like, nope. Nope. That's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, I don't even have an hour in that game. And I was just like, oh, this is bad. And looking at reviews, a lot of people are in agreement. Oh, I'm reading one right now. After I uninstalled, I took a dump and it was more enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I think that sums it up. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I'm sorry you had to play that, but at least better you than me is what I'd go with. Yes, I was going to write an article on it, and I could not even come up with enough constructive criticism to write an article. It was that bad. Oh, well. Was that it? Was that all you played? <laughs> it just made you throw up? and. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That pretty much set the tone for the whole week. <laughs> <laughs> what a shit week this has been. Great. <laughs> if only you knew. Sounds like. yeah. <laughs> what about what about you, Wigan? Uh, I've been playing some Company of Heroes 2 uh, auto matching, which is the PvP ranked shenanigans. I have ranked in that game. Yes, that you can get on a leaderboard with your name and this smiley face next to your... I don't actually know what the smiley face is, but, oh. but um, no, there is ranked in middle their games. Was Wait, what? I'd use. I'd use a middle finger if I had a choice. Number 2,773 with a middle finger. I, I'm easily amused. Get off me, all right? Yes, we do know you're easily amused. Um, So that's <laughs> what I've been playing. And... Everyone I've played against has been the Russians, so that's a thing. Like actual Russians, or they chose the Russian side? They chose the Russians. Some of them may have been actually Russians, <laughs> but I, I have to say, if they were from Russia, I did not notice any lag while playing, so that might be a plus. But uh, no, they picked the Russian faction, I should clarify. And um, that Being game needs some, some changes balance-wise, I feel, <laughs> and I didn't play a lot of it, but... I just uh I feel like you nerd rage and you're not telling us. I I did get kind of frustrated. I I still feel like there's not a lot of unit choice. And I feel like the first game that each unit had a role more or less. There was a couple that like could do more than one role. But in this one they for instance, let's use a for instance here, the uh Volksgrenadiers in the first game um could be upgraded with MP40s, which were submachine guns that were used for close combat, and you could use them against other infantry units. And then, if you upgraded to Tier 2 um, units, they had the ability to shoot a rocket launcher, essentially. So you could deal with infantry, and you could shoot at tanks. And I'm like, okay, dual purpose. Uh, in this game, the Volksgrenadiers have one upgrade that gives them the ability uh, that gives them anti-tank rifle, or again, anti-tank guns to shoot at armor. But there's no infantry. I mean, there might give one guy in the squad an upgraded machine gun, but the description on the button says this is for anti-tanks. So when the Russian guys rush at you with a bunch of infantry, because, you know, that happened, um, I feel really <laughs> unprepared. Like, I don't feel like I have uh, adequate... Uh, units to counter them and that is frustrating because there's like two infantry units or three two or three infantry units that the faction that i play as has and the rest of it is armor and while i have armor units that are able to shoot at their infantry 
that's susceptible to being shot at by their giant tank. And so I feel like there's not as much flexibility with the units. And I guess that's my biggest complaint, which is annoying. Because I thought with the second game they'd had more units, not scale everything down. And I think they did that to balance it, but I don't feel that it's very well balanced. No. That may sum up my nerd rage. I'm sorry if a lot of that went over people's heads. No, I mean, you're mad because you can't dual spec, you nerd. Right? You can't dual spec anymore. Um, <laughs> yes. And you can't, yes, you can't have, you can't dual. And there's not, there's also not like a specific, um, like in the, uh, for a different faction in the original, there was like tank buster guys, which were specific for taking out tanks. And there was also guys that were specific for taking out infantry. And they sort of combined that, but not really. And yes, essentially, you cannot use the infantry. I feel like I have a lack of um, anti-infantry units that are infantry because I like to use infantry and not use armor. And I feel like that ability, my playstyle is thus limited because of that. Well, it's because you're playing wrong. That's essentially what they're <laughs> telling me. Yes, I'm playing wrong. And I'm like, that's, that's not nice. <laughs> well, that sucks for you. Uh, Smuffles. You played anything interesting this week? Yeah, I've been playing uh, Diablo 3 and Borderlands 3 sequel. Nice. Um, in pre-sequel, like, I got it when it came out. And I was super busy with school, so I didn't really get a chance to play it till this week. Um, but I played through, like, the entire storyline, which seemed a little bit shorter than Borderlands 2, but I also realized I did, like, no side missions, so... I kind of just ran straight through the main storyline, but it was actually really good, and it was it's a super fun game. It's still Borderlands, um, so if you've played Quite one or space. two, yeah, if you've played one or two, <laughs> you know what it's going to feel like. It's just now you can butt slam and jump really high, which is cool. It's a fun mechanic, um, and my only gripe with the game so far is the freaking oxygen. I hate the fact that I have to, like, make sure I go to places to get my oxygen refilled, you know, which they have plenty of, so it's not that bad. But I like to just, you know, kind of explore a little bit or find a nice sniper perch and just sit there and snipe punks for days. But instead, I'm like, okay. You could, camper. Yeah, I could, I could <laughs> like, sit back here and snipe a bunch, but, you know, after about a minute, I'm going to need oxygen, otherwise my health is going to start going down. Well... Uh, Thank God yeah. something smokes you guys out into the open now. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, the other funny part of that game, I mean, they have a lot of funny parts in that game because it's Borderlands. Um, but one of the things that <laughs> pissed me off but was hilarious at the same time was I was playing with my friend, and he chose Claptrap, the annoying piece of crap character uh, yeah. that everyone hates, and they make lots yeah, of jokes about him. It's Should like Charger it? Binks. Yeah, it's the Jar Jar of this game. So anyways, my friend picks Jar Jar Binks, and <laughs> we were going around. And he does random abilities that uh, Vault Hunters from the previous games have had, or um, a couple random abilities that he can get from going in his different skill trees. And one of the random things he can get is bounce uncontrollably, and it applies to the whole party. So you just start bouncing up and down on the ground uncontrollably, and bullets bounce off of you and stuff, which is cool and all if you're like alive but it sucks <laughs> when i'm like dude i went down can you get me up and he's like i'll be right over and then all of a sudden he's like wait a minute i'm just bouncing uncontrollably i can't get you up and then i die and i'm like damn it <laughs> this fucking troll character sucks <laughs> well i guess he plays his part pretty well he does he does and then like trolls <laughs> then in diablo um my buddy and i have been working on greater rifts and stuff and uh and for fun i decided to make the tankiest wizard as possible so i got up to like 28 million toughness and had a complete tank spec and was able to just like tank as a wizard which makes absolutely no sense to me but <laughs> i made it work so my uh my role in games which i usually have is make something stupid that somehow works and so i completed it for diablo 3 so mission tank accomplished wizard. Hank fucking wizard. It's, yeah. it's like you're gonna give me another reason to hate mages, and you just you just gave it to me right there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh man, unbelievable. Well, Hallie, it's a th it's a thing now. It is a thing. Before you get to say yours, 
I think I just might, uh, yeah, you can jump in. I'm pretty sure this crowns are weak in, in gaming. Yeah, I know uh, already where it's going. Yeah, we were, we were, uh, playing Arc Age, like we seem to do a lot lately. And, uh, we, everyone's gotten off. And we decided, you know, let's make a trade run, essentially. You make a pack of goods. Oh, not this story. Of all the you, stories, this story. <laughs> and you sell it to the other side, the other continent, what have you, for uh, more money. And so we make the packs, and we didn't get two minutes out of the water before some asshole fucking rams into us, right? Harpoons us, and like, oh, it's just... Our cold. faction, it's our by the fa way. Yeah, our it's, faction. So his name, quote, quote. his name shows as green. He seems, yep. for all intents and purposes at this point of the story, he appears like an ally dicking around. Yeah, so we thought, oh, it's just low levels being douchebags, right? So we didn't think nothing of it. Next thing I know, I'm half dead. I, 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 they pretty much they went straight pirate out. I know they murdered me before anything could really happen. Then they end they, up killing Pally here. They pull they pull Kyle off the boat. He uses like basically like a scorpion get over here kind of move and yanks Kyle off the boat. We've got trade packs on, so our mobility is like severely limited. We can only walk and even then at like a, a snail's pace. So they burn Kyle down in a matter of seconds, and by the time I can even get to the fight, it's already done with him, and then they proceed to rinse repeat on top of me. So go uh, ahead, Kyle. Yeah, no. And I don't, your two cents. Uh, the, so we, we get back to shore and they're like, you know what, screw these guys, let's get back out there. They're still fishing up our packs, I know they're still over there. So we get over there, and we think we're gonna get, we're about to murder them, we're about to, you know, get our revenge, and, but they move slightly to the left, just enough to where they're safe. In a weird safe zone area, they're just perfect out of reach, and we can't do anything about it, right? So, Pally proceeds to, um, narrate John them, and... Do, uh, I will I will let that you know leave that to your imagination because <laughs> um, I don't think that would be things that should be said here and so not a PG thirteen rated conversation yeah so we we then proceed to spend the next two hours um, just camping them essentially we're like just uh, on our boat just like going around the bay waiting for them because we know they're gonna be back out there uh, camping for more people catching them unaware. And so we, we proceed to camp them and kill them about six, seven times during the course of the two hours. Effectively put them out of business for the night. Yeah. And so I, I feel good about ourselves. We even blew up their boat at one point. That was really nice. But I think the crowning moment was the next day, and we find one of them's in trial, and I find out that they're getting, he's getting off. He's getting off a trial. He's going to walk innocent because he killed some of the right people. And that pissed me off. Right, so I I go into faction chat, and I'm like, you know, screw this guy, and screw the guild that he was with, right? Because uh, he was it was him and some other guy from Area of Valor, the guild, and um, yeah, I screw both of them. I can't believe they're getting off. You guys are you guys are jerks for letting them get off, you know, move on, and and then I get a uh, a tell, like ten minutes later after I said all that sh all that all of that after I said all that. You know, people are like, whoa, man, you need to calm down, harsh. I get a whisper, and they says, you know, you know, what's your problem, man? What's your beef with this guild? Like, what what the hell? And I'm like, I don't know, my problem is my own. Screw you, who the hell are you? And so we start hitting it off, and it turns out that this is a, a, a GM, or the, the guild master of that guild, and they were wondering why I was pissed at them. And I told them that we were ganked, and I effectively got someone kicked from their own guild. They removed him from it, and that just made me feel all kinds of warm and fuzzy inside. Oh, man. <laughs> awesome. It was great. So Kyle's a narc, and he feels great about it. Hell, yeah. Me, on so, the other hand, I raged at him like an eight-year-old and then proceeded to hunt him down everywhere I could and kill him left and right. So I, I don't know which one of us is really better in this regard, but... <laughs> I, think, uh, I think as a team, you guys are the perfect couple. Oh, we get that oh, a lot, actually. I'm all warm and fuzzy inside now. Shut up, <laughs> So I, I'm pretty sure that qualifies for both of ours, Pally, unless you wanted to add something else. Um, yeah, I mean, as, as far as playing, I, I pretty much have been living in the world of Aranor playing Arc Age. I'm there so much I should probably have my real mail forwarded there, too, because I'd have a better chance of seeing it and reading it. Um, I did dabble a little bit this past week with uh, a new reboot of the old arcade coin-op Strider franchise and a reboot of Shadowgate. 
Um, I was unable to play Strider because, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't really mention it too clearly on Steam, but it required a 64-bit operating system. I was still gaming in the 20th century with an old XP rig, which I have recently retired and now upgraded to a... Did it just blow up? Uh, yeah, it actually died <laughs> last night, finally. Poor thing. Um, I'm going to take it out and probably kick it a whole bunch because <laughs> I have a lot of frustration with that thing. But um, I upgraded to a very, very nice new uh, i7-based rig. Um, so I'm very pleased with that. Uh, but even with that kind of power, I still tend to play, once again, older games. <laughs> so I'm I'm gaming uh, old uh, NES games and uh, reboots of them on a ridiculously powerful PC. But at least I, I kind of take advantage of the the get up and go that it's got when I play Arc Age. Um, so that's, uh, other than Arc Age, those are the only two games I've really touched, um, but I really did not get into them very much. I need to get into Shadowgate with some due diligence here to see if that delivers on uh, what it seemed it could do. So that's pretty much where I'm at. As far as events, uh, I have nothing really... Now hold on, the... you're jumping the gun. Oh, my bad. I, I you are jumping the gun, part of sir. what we were doing. No, you're bad. My bad. My, bad, my, bad, my bad. I stepped back from the line, sir. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> so, moving on to the next question, I think you all know it now, is pretty much anything new you're looking forward to, and I know I love going. I know, I love it. I'm taking that from you. Uh, anything new you're looking forward to? Um, Pally, you like to share with the group? No, it just it simply said events, and I'm kind of following along with the outline here, so I, I'm sorry for stepping on your toes <laughs> there. Is it Captain Cardi or King Cardi? I'm not sure uh, which, but I, 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 apologize for stepping, I, I apologize for stepping on your toes, dictator. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I apologize for that. Um, no, I'm not really looking forward to any games on the horizon, because once again, like I said earlier, MMOs tend to just really bring out the absolute epitomes of the OCD and my personality, so I, I tend to shut down once I get involved in one of those because I, I don't want my attention to be drawn anywhere else, although I'm sure as other things pop onto the horizon that I may or may not have been aware of, a la Fear Online, I'll, I'll take a look at what they have to offer. Um, Event-wise, uh, there is a concert coming up in my local area about two months from now called Video Game... What's it called exactly? I believe it's uh, Video Games Live. It's a big, huge touring concert ensemble, like 40-piece orchestra that tours the world. Right now they're over in Europe somewhere. They're going to be in my area in a couple of months. Um, they take over a big convention center, put on uh, local vendors come, uh, different developers and publishers come. So it has a very kind of E3-ish environment going on outside with a full orchestra inside. And unlike some of the other uh, orchestrated events, um, they actually encourage audience participation and they play... Uh, interpretations of music from everything from Super Mario Brothers all the way up to Halo. Um, and I, I absolutely just eat up video game music. I'm a huge fan of OC Remix, uh, which is a, a website that supports those kinds of things. And uh, I'm just, I'm really, really looking forward to that. So uh, definitely video game related, but a little bit further out on the horizon from now. But I, I highly recommend it to anybody that's into those kinds of things. Check them out online, see when they're in your area. Tickets are generally pretty cheap and it looks like it's going to be an absolute blast. Yeah, I actually love to see one of those. Yeah, I, uh, I actually saw video games live uh, like, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago or something like that been in San there? Francisco. Yeah, I saw it in San Francisco and it was really freaking cool. It was like, it was, uh, I think it was like a little bit after Halo 2 came out. And when we went, um, I think, I think it was their closing song. They did this really badass version of the Halo Finish 2 the theme fight, song. right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was awesome. So, um, yeah, they did a great job and when I was there, they had like a projector that played a lot of uh, images from the games right, that they right. were um, playing music for. So if you weren't familiar with it, like I didn't know any of the music from Myst, but when they started playing it, they put up like the title screen for Myst and then they showed some gameplay footage and stuff. So I was really able to, to kind of get into it, even though I hadn't played the game or heard the music. So it's it's a really cool experience and and uh, video game. Awesome music, to I hear that. Is, I'm yeah. I'm so think, looking forward to it. 
Yeah, I think video game music is uh, something where when it's done right, it, it really adds a lot to the game. And Video Games Live kind of really makes you pay attention to it more in, in some of the games that are that are big titles. Because a lot of times it's easy to, to not really listen to the music and just play the game, especially if you're in voice chat or listening to your own music or something, which is something I do a lot. Um, but... Yeah, it's, well, it's cool to appreciate the music that goes into it. I, I know that this might sound a bit conceited because I, I'm I'm so into video games himself, so obviously I, I have a bias toward toward the music. But I mean, even going all the way back to like the 8-bit era and the chip tunes from that era, I mean, the, the perhaps the technology they were working with wasn't great, but you know, if it's reorchestrated with modern instruments, um, some of it, just compositionally speaking, is amazing music. Um, and I, I personally feel that that video, a lot of video games, particularly ones that aren't hiring some band like Linkin Park or Breaking Benjamin to do their soundtracks for them, um, where they're actually getting a composer to do the music for it, that basically what we're hearing along with um, a lot of cer well, certain movie soundtracks um, are, are like the classical music of our day and age. And if any music, in my personal opinion, like I said, although biased, um, if any music is still going to be around from our day and age that's being listened to 100 years ago, it'll be pieces similar, or 100 years from now, excuse me, um, pieces similar to that, because I, I find it hard to believe that anybody's going to be listening to Britney Spears or Justin Bieber five decades from now. But, but there is actually real quality to be found there uh, in the orchestrations and composition of the music. And it obviously, if, if you've played through the games, it's going to hit, you know, just a, a nostalgic nerve for you, so you're, you're good to go. Yeah. Um, well, to to bring it back on topic, Smuffles, and so just keep the ball rolling with you. On uh, I mean, any events you're looking forward to? Um, not really. Uh, <laughs> my schedule is pretty busy with school and work right now, so I've pretty much just been playing games and not really looking into events or anything. So nothing's really on my horizon. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, fair enough. I mean, we can't all have things. I mean, by that token, uh, I know they've heard me two weeks now blabber on about how much I love Halloween events in games, only to find out this year in the game of my, you know, my chosen poison, they decided to screw me and not have anything. They showed, like, here's a giant pumpkin, here's a quest for some candy, we're done here. That's it. That's all we got for you. And that, that hurt my heart like a lot yeah sad. that sucks it made it makes Cody very sad like i loved halloween events in every game i've played and then this one they threw the pooch on it bastards so that 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 pretty much ends me in a nutshell what about what about you wigan um i'm gonna go with nothing <laughs> Nothing at all. How was your How was your uh, Halloween server going? How was that event? Um, well, it's mostly empty, and I've been too busy to play on it, so it's going really well. <laughs> going swimmingly. Well, that's very unfortunate. What about you, Ice? Oh, you know what game I'm looking forward to? Oh, here it comes. Come on. Here it comes. Half Life Three. Uh. Uh huh. You knew it was coming. God damn it! <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, uh, with the events, maybe you should try TF2 because they're claiming their new update is gonna shock your system. And let me uh, quote them: They said it'll make you crap your pants, not fatal. Turn your hair white, still okay, and make your heart beat so fast it'll blow up your ribcage. Now you're dead. You should try it. I. I find that hard to believe, but I, that does entice me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's what the TF2 Halloween update claims, that they release the old maps, um, and then once they're update, we have to endure this shock tolerance for their update, so we'll see. But that's, that, well, I mean, I might, yeah, I might have to play that along with uh, the Fear game and have that with Payday 2. I see I might be busy this week. Sounds like a modern-day Parodius. <laughs> or uh sorry polybius that's what it was and on that note um unless anyone else has anything you know special they'd like to say well, i think we're done here that'll do it for us no everyone's good 
Never uh, I'd, good. Like to, uh, I'd like to thank the Curious Gamers for oh. inviting me to uh, be here today. And, Shut up, uh, Pally. Yep. Thanks Just, for uh, uh, thanks for coming. Traditional brown nosing, but yeah, no. Thanks All for having right. thanks Jeez. for having me, and I I enjoyed it, guys. All right, everyone, say goodbye. Adios. Bye. Adios, muchachos. Bye. The Curious Gamers.